Beast Machines episode reviews now continue with The Downward Spiral, Endgame Part 1. And with a title like that, gee, I wonder what's going to happen in this adventure. So remember where we left off. Uh, Strike and Obsidian had rejoined the now... Uh, the the uh, uh, the in, in now a drone bodied Megatron, uh, and the Maximals have control of the Grand Mall and the Sparks, which would kind of make this seem like a one sided affair. However, there's a there's a slight little problem to this is that the, even though they have control of the Grand Mall, which presumably means they have control of the planet because that's how Megatron was still in control of Cybertron. Nobody really thought to, oh, I don't know, shut the Viacon factories down. So even without a command base, Megatron has just been able to pump out, you know, thousands and thousands more drones uh, to an absolutely overwhelming degree. It seems like a little bit of an oversight by the Maximals, but hey, it's where we're at now. All right, so pretty straightforward episode there's not a whole lot of twist and turning going on around here it's mostly just how do we survive the viacon onslaught and an onslaught it is and though if you have not watched this episode uh you can see how it went you can see how it's going to go from here so yeah um there's a narrative that we get dropped on us really, really early in this episode, and that, that there's supposedly a mystery being set up about the Oracle, because according to this banter amongst the Maximals, apparently they, apparently the Oracle wanted Megatron to download it. They're actually pushing this idea that Prime Primal felt that the Oracle wanted to be downloaded into Megatron, so he allowed it to happen. He doesn't know why. I will give you a spoiler for the rest of the series. It doesn't come into play, and if it does, it is ex it is not explained in the least. So we are left with, at best, conjecture. Um, and that is not how you really want to end a series like this, uh, especially if you're considering it a five-season story and not a two-season. Uh, we'll talk about the ending Wednesday. Uh, let's see how the rest of this episode goes, though. Okay, so uh, we've got a few things that have to go on. Um, part part of it is they want to go take out the Viacon factories because we finally figured out that's the that's something that needs to be done. Uh, Rat Trap has a new version of his little uh, his little gadgets. So I was wrong in the previous episode about what the gadgets did. Um, previously, they were just supposed to block their uh, signatures from the scanners, which works well enough. Um, um, I previously, I thought this is where the hollow emitters made them appear like somebody else. No, no, this is, this episode is where the gizmos do that. And it is actually kind of clever, not only to pull, uh, not only to have another trick up rat trap sleeve, but it also pull, throws back to the hollow chips he discovered in a previous episode. So combining the, the scrambler array with the hollow chip. All right. Even night scream has to say, okay, fair. That was actually really smart of Rat Trap. Um, yeah, he's come a long way in his uh, in his necessity to find tricks rather than relying on weapons. So, okay, um, I'm still not behind on Rat Trap being the the tech of the team when it should have been Black Arachnia, but we'll we'll take it for what it is. We'll take it for what it is. He's grown a lot. All right. So the so while they're trying to stop the flow of drones on the ground, they are uh, the Maximals that are remaining on the Grand Mall are trying to get the shields to maintain, which they have a depleting power supply. That's handy. Uh, but also, they are trying to get the weapon grid online. For a show that was so determined to keep weapons and guns out of the hands of its heroes, we are now in the situation where they are desperately trying to get the arsenal of the Grand Mall online. Interesting how, uh, interesting how that happens. So, um... In order to uh, in order to protect the sparks from this Viacon horde, the shields have to go up. And like I said, there's a limited power supply on the shields. There is another problem with the shields. Uh, apparently, Botanica is a little bit different than the rest because she is a plant-based techno-organic. She can't be separated from the planet Cybertron too long. 
when she's cut off from the sh- from the planet by the shields, she immediately starts fading out and dying. Uh, and not not in the traditional tra- uh, like uh, not in the traditional transformer sense of like oh she's turning gray. No 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 she's like becoming translucent like she's literally uh, wasting away on the spot. This is a rat trap focused situation um, because okay so if we drop the we can't drop the shields because then the sparks are helpless and Megatron wins. We cannot uh, we can't open the shields up to save Botanica. You know it's one of those situations of the many versus the few. If you open up the shields to save Botanica, you doom Botanica anyway. So where where is the solution? Rat trap in total defiance of Optimus Primal. Defiance we have not seen since like season one, episode one and two. Rat trap. Uh, not since then have we seen this kind of defiance from him, and it is because he's in love with Botanica and does not want. Of course, watching someone you care about like suffering in front of you is like one of the worst experiences you can go through. So his idea is to rig a emitter uh to the uh to the frequency of the shield which means it'll pass straight through um now rat trap i'm going to assume this is a moment of panic because rat trap in this series should have been smart enough to realize that the emitter could be traced back and if the vehicons found it they'd be able to use that frequency uh to penetrate the shields which spoiler alert that's exactly what happens um, he should, but it seems like in a smarter moment, if he, in a moment that where he wasn't panicking, Rat Trap should have been smart enough in the series to think, maybe I should rig it to a timer to explode after it lands, or maybe I should put it on a part of the craft, the drop pod that will be on the bottom by the time they hit the surface. So it gets smashed. We don't get that. We don't get that. Um, it, it's, it's a plot device to put them in a better, in a worse situation. It's one that makes sense. Um, and it does have a very different side of Rat Trap. I will, I will give it that. It brings out a very different side of Rat Trap. To see him de- to see the Rat Trap who originally wouldn't even like fire back on the Predacons to, uh, you know, to, to to save his own skin, to save the skin of everyone around him, to go to this length, where he's literally willing to like put the sparks of all of Cybertron in jeopardy to save one person important to him. That's a big shift. That's a big shift. I'll give him credit for that. Uh, planet side, Megatron has his own things working on. So he's finally doing what he could have done before the series even began. Could have done it in any given episode. He is getting a new body built that is entirely mechanical. Uh, now, uh, granted, it's out of necessity because he's stuck in a diagnostic drone at the moment. So uh, we're only implied that he needs a template which is a really convenient way for the animators to say, we need to reuse a previous model because we can't afford to have a brand new model for the finale of this show. Um, so, yeah, the, that's kind of in the background. Um, they do get to fight. Uh, it's Cheetor, Black Arachnia, and Night Scream that actually have to... Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, Silverbolt, Black Arachnia, and Night Scream that have to fight off the Viacons on the ground and which watching Viacons blow themselves up because of the uh, the hollow emitters, pretty funny, Pr- pretty funny. There's a good comedic spot where the last uh, the la- the last uh, copter drone for uh, for Obsidian is just kind of cowering and shaking his head, like "Don't shoot me too, don't shoot me too." A little funny beat. Um, but they encounter Megatron, who has like really powered up his little body. He is a very frail little drone, but um, he's got shielding now, he's got electro whips, he's got a lot of little things packed into it, to the point where he's actually kind of a threat to the Maximals. Um, it takes Night Scream, oh hey, surprise, Night Scream saving the day. Um, it takes Night Scream blowing up the factory, uh, in order to stop Megatron, which does put a slight hold on his new body plan, but, uh, it won't be long before we get to see that take, take, uh, t- take shape. So, if you haven't guessed by now, uh, from the screenshots, um, nothing really goes well, <laughs> uh, aside from blowing up the Viacon factory, and even that is kind of a moot point. Um, that's mostly going to set up the situation we're going to be in for the finale of the series. 
You know, it's just a shame they didn't think of it sooner. To be fair, blowing up the Viacon factories is something they should have thought of in Season 1. Uh, but we're more concerned about Maximals running away than we were about Maximals doing something proactive. I will admit, seeing the Maximals, like, taking a defensive position in this episode is actually a little bit of a nice change of pace. Because uh, it's a bit of a role reversal for everything. Uh, so, you know... With three ep- with two episodes left after this, it's nice of them to finally throw in a little bit of variety in these Viacon encounters. But it does not last. Uh, so be- the Grandma takes way too much damage thanks to Rat Trap giving the Viacons the frequency. Uh, in his defense, in his defense, the shields were already draining the power for the Grand Maul drastically. They were at worst. Rat traps sped up the crash by like a few minutes at the most, so I'm not gonna like go over the. I'm not gonna go over uh, and like give Rat Trap a hard time because everyone in Rat Trap, everyone in this show gives Rat Trap too hard of a time. But we are left with a final scene of thousands of drones surrounding a very destroyed Grand Mall and a defenseless team of Maximals inside left to guard the sparks from an overwhelming number of drones. It's a pretty big cliffhanger for what is not even the final, you know, like the penultimate episode of the series. So, um, I'm giving it an enjoyable score. It's not, it's, it sets up a lot of tension for the finale. Um, it gets a few things right that should have been gotten a long time ago in the series, but hey, now is when it adds to the climax. And, yeah, and I think the best element of the episode is absolutely the the the, the, uh, the development and the, sh- and the highlight on Rat Trap here. And just, like, how far he has come as a character, as a person, uh, throughout, the re- throughout the entirety of the Beast era. So, that is Downward Spiral. Join me tomorrow. Um, the episode title is When Legends Fall. Uh, bet you can't guess how uh, how things go for our heroes in that one. So join me then. We are almost done. And remember, uh, if you want to see more episode, uh, episode reviews after this, that is what my Patreon campaign is for. Uh, keep keep the totals up where they are. Keep it over 700. We'll throw in Transformers Prime Season 3 and the Predacons Rising movie as reviews uh, uh, that will add to the queue. And then, we'll think, and then uh, we get to talk Transformers animated. So thank you guys for watching. I will see you for the next penultimate episode. We're gonna have to get your names for the books. You, Payo One. William Curant. Roll me a deception check. I thought their name was Payne. Roll a disadvantage. <laughs> okay. Right. That was like that was like the opposite of the help action there. You, Goblin. Uh, first name D's. <laughs> Watch your tongue. <laughs>